Hi everyone. Welcome back to my Pierce the Heart lessons from my home studio. I'm just having a little fun playing with my kneaded eraser <laughs> while I was waiting for you to join in. I hope you all had a good week. I had a really good week and I had fun preparing this lesson for you all. And uh, so let's get started. Talk, we'll talk real quickly and we'll get right to work. So I thought a fish tank is a great thing, great subject to do because of the colors and the shapes and the forms and a, an aquarium tank looked at straight on is a great example of one point perspective. So I'm going to be drawing with a dark black pencil to start. Um, remember you're going to be sketching in lightly and then I'm going to add these three fish if we should have time for all three fish to start drawing them and learn a few basics about drawing fish. And if we have time, we can start to add some of the plants and coral. And if not, you can look back at this um, lesson and continue drawing what's in the subject, or you can add your own. This is your world. Unless you're doing a, um, an illustration for a scientific journal, <laughs> or if you have a commission, you do not have to be exactly representational. You can invent and do whatever you like, and that's the beauty of art. Alrighty, so let's get started. Young people really enjoy learning how to do these shapes, these see-through cubes, I should say, in school. So I'm going to rough in my sides and bottom of my fish tank. You can use a mat board, a you know, pre-cut mat, if you're a little afraid of drawing, trying to draw some straight lines. As you can see, when I'm drawing on an easel, it's almost impossible to draw straight lines but I'm going to just get my locations of where I want my lines to be because I have my T-square and you can use it. You're not a bad artist if you use your T-square. Okay, so I like this height and I'm going to do an angle here and an angle here because in one point perspective, it would go off this page where these two lines would join at the horizon. But see how they're heading that way. I'm gonna rough in. See, I'm usually drawing lightly for myself, but I forget to draw dark for you, the camera. So let me do that now. Now, a good thing to do is just move your whole arm and your body. Let your body lean back. I'm going to drop a line from here and then join it from my bottom corner and then do my line across here. This is a great thing to practice at home. So quickly, I'll just do this. the way and this from my bottom now this is oh th because this is only a 30 minute lesson I'm going to just sketch things in real fast for you so you get the idea so we have a bit of a black border at the bottom of the fish tank and one at the top the top lid. Well, we're not using a lid, it's just the top of the glass tank. Okay. Now, for example, the black that's here in the colored pencil, that is about 12 layers of black colored pencil. So we don't have time to do that tonight, but I just want to let you know, you start lightly. Please don't ever start really, really dark. It just won't work and do layers, layers, layers. And you do those layers by 
up and down, across, diagonal. I have a black here that's a little blacker. And you build. Okay. You build. In all different directions. And then when you've reached the level of darkness that you like, then you can go straight across and get a uniform look, if you like that uniform look. All righty. Very quickly, I'm going to go across. Other side. Looks like a weird fish on top of that tank. <laughs> that little black smudge I just made. And if you're eyeballing it, you're looking at the distance from here to here as you make your line. Alrighty, so I don't want to make the other lines as dark. Another trick that I wanted to show you is I like the width of my Sometimes I like the width. See, I'm a little off because my paper is smudged. But I like the width of my T-square. So you can use this part to make perhaps your bottom part of your, your tank. If you'd like it a little larger. That's a great trick to do when you're um, using you know, straight edge. You can use it to your advantage. Alrighty. Now this draw, the drawing above is um, each fish was approximately an hour to do. But I'm going to be sketch helping you to learn how to sketch it in, in about six minutes of fish. And then you can continue it at home to add all the subtleties. Just, I'm just going to put this in quickly so we have a working area, working point for our brains. enough to start to learn to draw the fish. Now, fish are a wonderful subject because their forms are very simple. Um, we're going to start with the clownfish and you'll recognize the clownfish as the type of fish Dory is. Nope, sorry, I always do that. Nemo and this is the type of fish Dory is and that's a blue tang. Now, these are kind of real, these are realistic representations of the fish. In the future, I'll be doing some lessons on actually drawing Dory. And I must tell you, if you work with young people and you're teaching them how to draw a clownfish, they're going to want you to know how to draw Dory. So you better know. Did I say Dory again? I'm sorry. <laughs> They're going to want you to know how to draw Nemo. I do that all the time. You have to forgive me. It's very hot in my studio tonight. <laughs> all right, let's see if I can get through the rest of the lesson without saying the wrong name. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, so in a colored drawing, colored pencil drawing, 
Um, I'm going to start with the color of this fish instead of using the black today. And what I would like to do is I'm going to notice where she is, where he is, <laughs> and it's not exactly in the middle, so that's my spot. And you know, tip, a very typical, oh, I have to remember to draw dark, a very typical way to start to draw a fish is the this, right, that you did when you were kids. Because I just want to get my location correct at first. I want to make sure I have enough room for that bottom fin. So I'm going to bring that up a bit. A great thing about a clownfish is the cutest smile and little lips it has. What I like about the clownfish also is that it, the stripes help us draw it. So I'm going to find the location of the eye first. and begin drawing that first area of color. I'm not going to worry right now about the subtleties of the orange and yellow that are in the fish. I just want to get the drawing correct. So that's our white stripe there. So now I'm going to look at the shape of that orange area. Find your location. What is the shape of that orange area? And that's going to bring us to the tail. Area of white. Now, when you're really studying the fish, you'll see that it's not just black that is delineating these areas of color. It's there's purple and blue, and that's the real fun part. And this area of the tail fin is just delicate and so incredibly soft. You can usually see the water through it, but for today's pur purposes, I'm just gonna lay it in so you can get the idea of drawing it. Okay, so top. All right, we're gonna see, okay, where, okay, it's on the orange. It kind of comes up from here. There's a little bit of a black space there, and it ends and goes down. Kind of goes across here, and then this one goes all the way across the orange. Get that top. And when you're quickly sketching it in, you can do just little brief little lines like that to show that it's a fin. Okay, I'm going to go back to this point and I'm going to lay in this little fin. And we'll worry about the other colors later. And even though we're hitting here, that's okay. It's hard for me to see from the side, so I appreciate you bearing with me. So it's going to hit the bottom of the tag, but he'll be all right.
and you get the basic shape of that fin. We're going to travel down this way and we have another fin and you can see the black and a fun thing to do is just just back and forth like that look and we meet here and we're right on we're right on on our spacing and if you don't get the exact shape that you want right away that's okay every fish is different there are different ages of fish there are different varieties of the fish so don't be hard on yourself now there are a lot of colors in the um, fish, but I'll just quickly lay in a few to show you. So that's our white. And you see, I'll just point to here so I don't want to waste time. You'll see the different yellows, uh, darker oranges and reds. And that's all the fun stuff that you have plenty of time to do. And it really is so much fun. <laughs> I can't help it. I just got to put a little yellow in here. Okay, so let us move on to the horse, the seahorse. Of course... I have to do a seahorse because you know that's my favorite um, subject to draw on land. Now I'm putting my colored pencils back in order and that's really important because when you go to reach for one you really want to know where it is but the table's out of view but I have from yellow and all the way up to black and I keep them in the same grouping as I'm working. Alrighty, so because I drew this with a little deeper top than up here, that's okay. We'll still have room to teach you how to draw the seahorse. So I'm going to take some purples and I'm going to start with my lightest one. I hope you, I, I hope you can see this on the camera. Actually, you know what? Let's start with the darker. So this is, indigo, I have indigo blue and I have a violet. So again, just like always, we want to do our simple shapes and, decide, and make sure everything fits in our picture plane and we have the right direction. Now, I have a tendency to go straight down with that tail like a J, but it's not, is it? It's actually going this way, towards five o'clock on a clock. So check yourself, is your direction correct? Okay, I'm pretty happy that's going to fit in that space and that I have my direction and my gesture correct. Now I'm going to start to go into the details. So you can look at pictures on your phone. I know I'm talking a lot with this lesson, but it's all, it's, a, it's such a fun lesson. You can do, um, you can have pictures of the fish on your phone and zoom in and look at the really close details of them. Um, pictures on your phone will be brighter and lighter than real photographs and if you can be in front of a real tank even better to study these cre beautiful creatures so again I usually depart from the eye and that gives me this area here down to the nose and up, cheek, 
and the top that looks like real horse's ears. And then we're going to get into the spines. It's, I'm not sure if that's what they're called. I surely ask my brother who is the fish expert, but we'll just get the basics in today. With, when we have a more advanced lesson and more time, we'll get into that. So this comes down and we have a bit of a fin here and then the wonderful translucent soft part here. You can begin to shade. You can see where are my main darks and lights. So when you squint and look at this uh, seahorse, so it's darker on this side, darker here and underneath here. Okay, let's go on over to Dory. <laughs> I must have a thing for Dory, what can I tell you? So I'm going to start with a blue and we'll do her over here. So this is a long oval. I'm going to do her smaller than my example. And this is a great fish for beginners because it's a very simple tail. I have to remember to draw dark, sorry. And I'm going to get my indigo blue. It is. And again, I'm going to depart from the eye. I'm going to sneak in a little yellow <laughs> here. And a, similar to the clownfish, I'm going to use these markings to help me draw this fish. So I'm going to go up, go into, look at that. What are those shapes? Now it's almost a black, but I'm not going to think about that right now. I'm going to start with a blue and I can add some black later. And where does it end at the tail? Just lay that in quickly. What is this shape of this lighter blue? We're always departing and measuring with our eye, not with our... ruler. Let's add in some yellow, see where we're at. Alrighty, so underneath that we have this. I'm going to make this a little smaller. Okay. So where do we depart from here? Go down, around. Here, so above this area of dark is this wonderful area. And the more you study it, you see awesome triangles and it's just endless what you can do when you're drawing and painting fish. It's very, very relaxing. Well, coming up fast on you, clownfish. It also has a wonderful smile, almost a smile. Mouth. Go down. Let's see where that gill is compared to our eye. Lay that in. We have a little fin here. So let's depart from here. circle and down here the structure ends 
right here. We can do some quick lines just to get our bearings. I'm going to use my black. Just to help me see that better. We have some black on the tail. And the tail has a wonderful shape that goes like this. A very traditional shape. And that's really fun, especially for young people to draw. A little black on this end. And this is a nice dark blue at the top. Let's check our angle here. I'm going to come down a little bit. I was a little afraid of that tail, but the face comes down a little bit more. And you're black. So as you're going along, and if you'll see that what one thing leads to another, that leads to another, and you can, um, step away for a while, come back and look at it. A little bit of green here. So that's the beginning of a colored pencil drawing of these three fish. So we have them pretty much um, sketched in. And I wanted to talk to you about some of the things in the tank. So the clownfish loves to be in an enemy. And I wanted to talk to you about areas of your drawing. Now, the anemone has tons, right, to, of things to draw on it. Like, where do I even start? But the, the uh, waves in the water blow in all kinds of ways. So what, you, what I want you to do when if you're looking at underwater life is, okay, we have this this area going this way, and it's very similar to human hair. You want to see the, the grouping as opposed to the individual hairs. So we have going this way, we have it going up this way, right, underneath the fish, and we also have a grouping going this way. And you would just sketch it in, just like I'm doing, the base of the plant, the or animal, I think an anemone is an animal, again, I'll have to check on that. And there's a wonderful colored pencil called sand. It's not unlike um, Naples yellow, and that's always a great colored pencil to get. Now as you spend more and more time on your drawing, you will see so many different colors in the bait, whatever the base of the tank has. Might be pebbles or stones, it might just be sand, but you see lots of dis different textures in co and colors. I'm gonna just lay that in quickly. And one thing before we finish is, and I'm not seeing my light blue. Um, okay, so, <sighs> When you're doing, we'll just talk about it then, when you're doing the water or sky, you'll be putting in a few layers, I'm gonna use this blue for now, you'll be putting in a few layers very lightly, you can hold it like a pencil, or you can hold it like this. Okay. And after you do a few layers, a great thing to learn about colored pencil is burnishing and blending. So we take our white and we go over all those layers. And that's, if you can see this, I hope on the camera, over here is where I began to do that for you. And I left the first layer here. So you can see how we develop from here to this beautiful area over here. Well, I wish we had more time to do more of the fish tank. Perhaps we'll do a longer lesson in the future or a couple of different lessons. Um, also, I look forward to 
posting lots of tips that you can learn about beginning color pencil and uh, drawing underwater, under the sea. I hope you have a good week. And thanks for joining me. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. And I'll be here every Wednesday at 7 o'clock for some beginner drawing lessons. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.